Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Israel Math Olympiad problem one from the year 2000. It's a cool short intro number theory problem that I suggest you try out for about say at least five minutes ideally 10 to 20 not more than 40 minutes. If you'd like to go along with us give it a go for two minutes and now let's begin. So what do we have? We have a number that is literally one like the digits of one factorial so it's going to be like it's a is 0 0.1 then two factorial is two then three factorial is six then four factorial is 24 so we have now a two four then five factorial is 120 so we have one zero two and then we have so on and so forth like we have a five we have five factorial which is actually no one, two, three, four, five, then we have six factorial, which is 720, and then eight, and so on and so forth, right? And we must determine whether or not A is rational. So first question, what would it mean if A was rational? What would, the what would that necessitate uh, to be true about the decimal representation here of A? What would that mean? Pause for three to five minutes and think about that. And the answer is, well, it would mean that starting from some point, these digits would have to be periodic. That's pretty much that. And if they're periodic starting from some place, then okay, can we prove that? And you might, like you should also ask yourself, like, what is an easy route to go down when you're trying to prove things? Is it easier for a to be rational or irrational? If it's rational, we need to figure out and m and n such that m over n is a but you also have to like ask yourself when you're looking at this problem is is there any m and n which seem to make sense like think about it this is all the numbers that all the factorials for every n i mean i don't like it might be biased here but it seems if some m over n was equal to a, I'd be curious like what m like what makes m and n special as opposed to all the other numbers? Like which numbers could they even be? So that's like one broader reasoning why we try to prove that a is irrational. But the second one is it seems to be a simpler one. Like okay, we just need to show that we cannot have a period after a certain point. And how do we do that? Well, well, let's assume that starting from some n, like let these digits be a1, a2, a3, a4, a6, you know, a4 is 2, a, actually a5 is 4, and so on and so forth. And let's say starting from some n, like for every n that's greater than some capital N, we have a n is equal to a n plus p, where p is the period. Okay, so what does this mean? Pause for five minutes and think about how you push this further and how what I do is here. Think about it. A n is a n plus b. Okay. Now this means if I have consec p consecutive integer like p consecutive digits starting from this period point that I know every other one and know every other digit. And if I had any like the consecutive digits later on, I could go back and figure out the starting ones. Okay. So now can I in any way have a sequence of P digits, any P digits here that I know something about. And also mind you, we're doing base 10 here. Like that can maybe be something that's specific to this. The fact that we're doing base 10 might mean something. You might like you might think it means something because this is in base 10, a representation. So maybe there's are some actually funky numbers M and N which has something to do with base 10, which means something. Uh, but if you think about base 10, what is going to be interesting, unique for base 10. That's how we're picking the digits. And the answer is, well, we can pick for what's it called 10p factorial. This number is what? How many zeros does it have? 
well, it has at least p zeros, like it has 10 times 20 times 30 times all the way till times 10p. So I've did, that did a times 10 at least p times, right? I've done it more, but this number has more than p zeros. And so, or 10p plus factorial of x plus 10p for whatever x. Still, it has 10 times 10 times 20 times all the way till times 10 times p, right? So we're going to have this number if we just pick n x such that, or we just pick x is equal to n. There you go. x is equal to n. And then we would have a sequence of p digits that are all zeros. p consecutive digits that are all zeros, actually. Which means that this uh, period, if such a p exists, we'd have that we'd have only zeros starting from some n. But that's absurd because the first digit of this number, or I say, what's it called for? n plus 10p plus 1 also has digits in sequence. And the first digit here starts with a non-zero digit, is non-zero, and ergo, a contradiction. So we cannot have a period starting from some n, which means that a isn't rational and this solves our problem. And I thought it was just like a cool little thing for you to see how to deal with things which seem distant and also a cool little problem from Israel. And as always, thanks for problem solving.